Petron and Caltex are two major oil and gas companies in the Philippines. Petron Corporation is a Philippine-based company engaged in refining, marketing, and distribution of petroleum products. It operates a network of retail service stations, terminals, and depots throughout the country. Caltex, on the other hand, is a brand owned by Chevron Philippines Incorporation, which is engaged in the manufacturing, blending, and distribution of high-quality fuels, lubricants, and other petroleum products. So liquidity ratio measures the firm's ability to pay its current obligations as they arise to serve as useful limits in regulating the borrowings and spending of the firms. It has two parts, which are the current ratio and the quick ratio. By this, we may able to use this to get the liquidity ratios for both Caltex and Petron oil companies. So first, um, we will find the current ratio and the quick ratio of Petron oil company. So, current ratio is computed by dividing the current assets of the company by its current liabilities. So, in this case, um, the Petron has a current ratio of 0 0.99 is to 1 or 99%. So, therefore, the, um, the Petron is not liquid and it's indicating that the company has no sufficient current asset to cover off its current liabilities. Next one is the quick ratio. Quick ratio is calculated by dividing the quick assets, which is the cash and receivable, by the current liabilities. So in this case, um, the Petron has a quick ratio of 0 0.46 is to 1 or 46% indicating that Petron may not be able to meet its current liabilities using only its quick assets. For the Caltex, um, for the Caltex oil company, so the current ratio, um, the current ratio is computed by dividing the current assets of the company, but by its current liabilities. So in this case, um, the the Caltex has a current ratio of 1.34 is to 1, or 134%. So, it means lang na the business is liquid and it's indicating that the company has a sufficient current assets to cover up um, its current liabilities. Well, it is good to the company because they, are, they may be able to pay their debts. So, the company should... Um, um, so, the company um, should um, like additionally invest another capital so that they should refrain from borrowing money um, borrowing money and they may able to meet the obligation they have. So next one is the quick ratio. So quick ratio is calculated by dividing the quick assets, of course the cash and receivable by its current liabilities. So in the case of Caltex, um, the quick ratio for the Caltex um, is um, 0 0.55 is to 1 or 55% indicating that the Caltex may not um, be able to meet its current liabilities using only its quick assets. Hi, I'm Janet Pinanis and I'm going to present to you the receivable turnover and inventory turnover of the two industry, so which is the Caltex and the Patreon. So we start in the Caltex. So by the using of the formula of this formula, net sales divide average accounts receivable divide two. 
So by getting the uh, by getting the amount in financial statement and the income statement of the net sales, so we have the result 13.24 times. So it means the Caltex will able to collect the its receivable 13 times in a year. So to get the uh, average collection period, the result of times will divided into the days in a one year so 365 days over 13.04 then the result is 27.9 so the collection are made in 27.9 days or 28 days so let us press the receivable turnover uh, the same formula net sales over average account receivable over two then the amount we are looking or we are getting from the income statement and the financial statement so after substituting the amount in the the uh, in uh, net sales and account average receivable so it have first add the average receivable so after adding the two divide into two then the result divide into net sales so we get the times or the 11.10 times so the Patron is able to collect its receivable 11 times in a year. To get the average collection period, 365 days over 11.10 times. So the result is 32.9 or 33 days. So the, the Patron collection of receivable is made every 33 days. So in order to get the ratio, we have first the formula, cost of goods sold over average inventory over 2. So the same process in account receivable or receivable turnover. So get the, uh, fi we go in the income statement to get the cost of goods sold amount and uh, average inventory and financial statement. So after... Uh, we start in the adding the two inventories in 2021 uh, 2020 so after adding divide into two and the result will divide in the cost of goods sold amount so so the result is 8.40 times so the inventory are sold 8.40 days or times in a year to get the average sales period so 365 days divide 8.40 which is the times we get in the uh, inventory so the result is 43.45 days or 43 days uh, the Celtics sales are made on 43 days proceed to inventory stone over so with the using of this formula cost of goods sold over average inventories over two then getting the amount of cost of goods sold in income statement and the inventories in 2020 to 2021 and after putting the amount it first the adding the inventories so after adding divide into two so after dividing into two divide into cost of goods sold so the result is 7.24 times so the petroleum inventories are sold seven times in a year to get the average sales period 365 days over 7.24 times so the result is 50.4 days or 50 days so the patron sales are made every 50 days so we have done finding the receivables and over and inventories turn over every industry we have noticed the differences between the politics and the patron 
A pleasant afternoon to each and everyone. Today, I will discuss about the PPA fixed asset turnover ratio in Petron. Step 1, com compute the average property plan and equipment PPA balance. Petron PPA balance is given as 171,602 and 168,831 in the two different period. To find the average PPA balance, add the two value together and divide by 2. Average PPA balance equals 171,602 plus 168,831 divided 2 is equal to 170,216.5. Step to compute the PPA turnover ratio to calculate the PPA turnover ratio divided Petron net sales by the average PPA balance. PPA turnover ratio equal net sales divided Average PPA balance is 438,057 did by 170,216.5 is equal to 2.57 is to 1. Interpretation of Petron, PPA turnover ratio is 2.57 is to 1, which means that for every peso worth of PPA, the Petron has they generate the 2.57 in net sale. This ratio is measure how to efficient Petron is using its PPA to generate the Petron is generating more sales with its existing PPA which is good sign for the company's prop pro property. In this case, ratio is 2.57.1 suggests that Petron is a using a PPA effectively to generate revenue. And the second is Caltex. In this case, we need to company net sales and average net property plan and equipment of PPA value. Let's assume that we have these uh, figures for the relevant period. Calculate the uh, average net PPA revenue by adding the beginning and ending PPA values and dividing by 2. In this case, the beginning PPA value is 12,262,721 and the ending value is 12,352,967. Average net PPA is 12,262,721 uh, 12, plus 12,352,967 12, divided 2 is equal to 12,307. 844. To use the formula for PPA fixed asset turnover to compute the ratio, PPA fixed asset turnover equals net sales divided by average net PPA. In the figure from the problem, we get PPA fixed asset turnover is equal to 34,538,430 divide 12,307,000. 844 is equal to 8.81 is to 1. To interpret the result, the Caltex ratio is 2.81 is to 1. Suggests the company is generating 2.81 in sales for every peso invest in fixed asset. This is a fairly healthy ratio, indicating that Caltex is making efficient use for its asset to generate revenue. For Caltex, the formula for total asset turnover is net sales divided by the average total asset. Net sales for Caltex is given as 34,538,430 pesos. In order to compute the average total assets, we add the total assets for the beginning and ending of the year and divide it by 2. The beginning total asset for Caltex is 19,740,216 and the ending total asset is 23,582,457 pesos. So the average total asset is 21,661,336 pesos and 5 centavos. Then we divide the net sales by the average total asset to get the asset turnover ratio. 34,538,430 pesos divided by 21,661,336 pesos and 5 centavos is equal to 1.59 is to 1 or 159%.
This means that for every one peso of asset that Caltex has, it generates one peso and 59 centavos of sales. This indicates that Caltex is able to use its assets efficiently to generate sales. For Petron, again, we use the formula for total asset turnover. Net sales divided by the average total asset. Net sales for Petron is giving us 438,057 pesos. The beginning total asset for Petron is 407,420 and the ending total asset is 349,725 pesos. So we just add the beginning and ending year and divided by 2. So the average total asset is 378,572 pesos and 5 centavos. Then we divide the net sales by the average total assets to get the asset turnover ratio. 438,057 pesos divided by 378,572 pesos pesos and 5 centavos is equal to 1.16 is to 1 or 116 percent. This means that for every 1 peso of asset that Petron has, it generates 1 peso and 16 centavos of sales. This indicates that Petron is able to use its asset efficiently to generate sales. The equity ratio is calculated by dividing the total liabilities by shareholders equity and Caltex has the debt equity ratio of 1.21 over 1 or 112 percent that indicates that the company has more debt than equity and this ratio also indicates that the company relies more on debt financing than equity financing so next up is the debt to asset ratio it is calculated by dividing the total liabilities by the total assets. In the case of Caltex company, it has more it has debt to asset ratio of 0.53 to 1 or 53%, which means that the 53% of the company asset are financed by the debt. Number of times interest earned is calculated by dividing the operating income and the annual interest expenses. So, number of times interest earned of 2.37 times of the Caltex company. That indicates that the company is has, has the sufficient earnings to cover its interest expenses. Good morning everyone, my name is Joanna Marie Pivillier and I'm my assigned topic is Pictron. So let's break down the calculation step by step. So debt to equity ratio. So the formula for debt to equity ratio is total liabilities and total shareholders equity. Now let's plug in a number for Pitron. So debt to equity ratio is 296,507 and 110,913. So is equal to 2.67 over 1 or 2 267% so this means that for every 1 peso of equity that Pitron has it has 2.67 peso of debt so the high ratio the ratio suggests that Pitron has more debt than equity and maybe at a higher risk of defaulting on its debt payment so so deep ratio the formula for deep ratio is total liabilities to total asset now let's plug in the number for Petron so two, deep ratio is 296,507 and 407,420 so is equal to 0 0.73 over 1 or 73% this means that that 73% of Petron's assets are financed by debt. A higher debt ratio indicates that a company is more leveraged and may be at a higher risk of defaulting on its debt payments. So, based on the calculation, Petron appears to have a high level of debt in relation to its equity, with a debt to equity ratio of 2.67 over 1 or 267%. Additionally, 73. 
percent of Patreon's asset are fi financed by debt, as shown by its debt ratio of 0.73 over 1 or 73 percent. These ratios indicates that Patreon may be highly leveraged and could be a risk of defaulting on its debt payments. So, investor and uh, stakeholders may want to close monitor Patreon's financial performance and debt levels to assess the company's ability to manage its debts, debt obligations. We are going to discuss the gross profit margin. So we have the two companies, the Caltex and the Petrot. So to calculate the gross profit margin, we need to know the gross profit and debt sales figure for each company. The gross profit is the difference between the revenue earned from selling products or services and the cost of producing these products or services. The net sales figure is the total revenue earned from the sales after deducting any discounts or returns or allowance. So for Petron, we have the following figures. So the gross profit of Petron is 30499 while the net sales is 438057 To compute the gross profit margin, we divide the gross profit by the net sales. So, gross profit mar margin equals to gross profit divided by the net sales. 30,499 divide 438.57. So, the equals is 0 0.7 or 7%. This means that for every peso of revenue earned by Petron, 7 pesos are left over after deducting the cost good of sold. In other words, for Caltex, we have the figu following figures. So the gross profit is 3,049,297, while the net sales is 34,538,430. So to compute the gross profit again, profit margin again, we divide the gross profit by the net sales. So gross profit margin is equals to gross profit divided by net sales. So 304, uh, 3,000,000. Uh, 300 million 49,297 divided by 34,538,430. Uh, so the equals is 0.09 or 9%. This means that for every 1 peso of revenue earned by Caltex, 9 pesos are left over after deducting the cost of goods sold. In other words, uh, Caltex earns a gross profit of 9% on its sales. So in comparing those two companies, we can see that Caltex has a higher gross profit margin than Petron, <coughs> which suggests that Caltex is more profitable than Petron on a per sale basis. However, it's important to note that gross profit margin alone does not tell us the whole story about the financial health uh, about the company's financial health. Other factors such as operating expenses, debt, and taxes can also impact a company's overall profitability. Therefore, therefore, it's important to consider multiple fin financial metrics and ratio when evaluating a company's financial performance. Thank you. So good day everyone. Uh, let's talk about here the net profit margin from two companies. So let's begin with to the Caltex base from the net profit uh, margin we have net profit over income net sales from the net profit we have 1,051,740 pesos then over 34,538,430 pesos equal 0.03 is to 1 or 3% from the net profit margin of Petron base, we have net profit over income net sales. So the net profit, we have 6,136 over uh, 438,057 pesos equals 0 0.02 is to 1 or 2%. That's all. Thank you. Once again, good day. So good day, I am Mila Rose Pilisan and I will be reporting the return on assets and return on, e on equity of Caltex and Petron. So the first for Caltex, the first step in calculating the ROA is to de determine the net income which is given as 1,051,740. 
Then the average total assets need to be computed by adding the beginning and ending asset balances and dividing by 2. So the average total assets are 19,740,218 plus 23,582,457 divided by 2 is equals to 20,661,337.5 Finally, the, the ROA is calculated as net income divided by average total assets which is 1,051,740 um, divided by uh, 21,661,337.5 is equals to 0 0.05 is to 1 or uh, 5%. So, to interpret, for every peso of asset assets invested, Caltex generated 5 cents of profit. So, this indicates that Caltex is efficient in generating profits from its assets. Next, the return on equity. So, the first step in calculating the ROE is to determine the net income which is given as 1,051,740. Then, the average shareholder's equity needs to be computed by adding the beginning and ending equity balances and dividing by 2. So, the average shareholder's equity is 10,043,709 plus 11... 1,132,983 divided by 2 is equals to 10,588,346. So finally, the ROE is calculated as net income divided by average shareholders equity which is 1,051,740 divided by 10,500,000. 88,346 is equals to 0 0.10 is to 1 or 10%. So for every peso of equity invested, Caltex generated 10 cents of profit. So this indicates that Caltex is able to generate high profits from its shareholders' equity, which is a positive sign for the company. Next is Petron. So the return on assets, the first step in calculating the uh, ROA is to determine the net income, which is given as 6,136. Then, the average total assets need to be computed by adding the beginning and ending asset, ba asset balances and dividing by 2. So, the average total assets are 407,420 plus 349,725 divided by 2 is equals to 378,572.5. Finally, the ROA is calculated as net income divided by average total assets which is 6,136 over 378,000 um, and 572.5 is equals to 0 0.02 is to 1 or 2%. So, to interpret, to interpret, for every peso of assets invested, Petron generated 2 cents of profit. So, this indicates that Petron is not as efficient as Caltex in generating profits from its assets. So, the, the return on equity. So, the first step in calculating the ROE is to determine the net income which is given as 6,136. Then, the average shareholder's equity needs to be computed by adding the beginning and ending equity balances and dividing by 2. So, the average shareholder's e equity is 110,913 plus 86 1,195 um, divided by 2 is equals to 98,554. Finally, the ROA is calculated as net income divided by average shareholders' equity, which is um, 
6,136 divided by 98,554 is equals to 0 0.06 is to 1 or 6%. So, to interpret for every peso of equity invested, Petron generated 6 cents of profits. So, this indicates that Petron is able to generate moderate profits from its shareholders' equity, but not as much as Caltex. So, that would be all. Thank you. Based on the financial ratios provided, Caltex appears to have better liquidity, asset management and profitability compared to Petron. Caltex current ratio and asset test ratio indicate that the company has more than enough current assets to cover its current liabilities. And its inventory and fixed asset turnover ratios suggest efficient management of assets. The company's profitability ratios, including gross profit margin, net profit margin, return on assets, and return on equity also indicate that the company is generating healthy profits. On the other hand, Petron's liquidity ratio suggests that the company has just enough current assets to cover its current liabilities, and its inventory and fixed asset turnover ratios indicate a lower efficiency in managing its assets. Petron's profitability ratios, including gross profit margin, net profit margin, return on assets, and return on equity are also lower than those of Caltex. In terms of debt management, Caltex appears to have a better debt to equity ratio and debt ratio than Petron, indicating a lower level of leverage. For Caltex, the company could focus on maintaining its strong liquidity position and continue to efficiently manage its assets to sustain its profitability. The company could also consider exploring new revenue streams and expanding its marketing reach to further grow its business. And for Petron, the company could focus on improving its liquidity position by increasing its current assets or decreasing its current liabilities. The company could also improve its asset management efficiency to increase its profitability. Petron could consider implementing cost-cutting measures and streamlining its operations to increase its efficiency. The company could also consider refinancing its debt or reducing its leverage to improve its debt management position.